In this video, we'll be discussing two essential navigational concepts, the dead reckoning position, and the estimated position. Each of these methods plays a vital role in determining ship's position at sea, especially when primary tools like GPS are unavailable. We'll break down the differences between them, how they are used in navigation, and why it's important to understand these distinctions for safe and effective passage planning. Dead reckoning, or DR position, is the position of the ship determined solely based on its last known position, course, and speed over a given period, without taking into account external factors such as wind, current, or other navigational influences. Let's say that due to unforeseen circumstances, our GPS receiver on board is no longer operational, and we're navigating on the high seas. In this situation, our first option is to determine the ship's position through dead reckoning. Let's start by assuming this is the ship's last known position, a GPS fix at 0800 hours, marked with the standard symbol for GPS fixes. If the next waypoint is located here, draw a line from the last known position to the waypoint. This line represents our planned track towards this waypoint. Now, using a navigational triangle and compass rows, determine the course to steer. In this case, the course towards the next waypoint is 139 degrees true. If the ship has a speed of 12 knots, this means that she covers 12 nautical miles in one hour. To determine her DR position at 0900 hours, use the compass divider and measure 12 nautical miles on the latitude scale. Lay down the compass divider from the ship's last known position along the planned track. This point will be the ship's DR position at 0900 hours, represented by the symbol, a half circle with a dot inside. If we measure another 12 nautical miles from 0900 hours, this gives us the ship's DR position at 1000 hours. Similarly, by measuring another 12 nautical miles, the DR position at 1100 hours will be here, and so on. Keep in mind that DR positions can be increasingly inaccurate over time because we don't account for external factors such as wind and current. Therefore, DR is less precise compared to GPS and radar fixes. So how do we find the ship's DR position at 0840 hours? First, we need to calculate the distance traveled by the ship in 40 minutes at a speed of 12 knots. We'll use the formula, distance is equal to, speed times time. The ship's speed is 12 knots or 12 miles per hour, multiplied by the steaming time which is, 40 minutes. But since the steaming time is in minutes, and the speed is in miles per hour, we will divide it by 60 to convert minute into hour, since there are 60 minutes in one hour. The ship has traveled 8 nautical miles in 40 minutes, at a speed of 12 knots. Now, take the compass divider and measure 8 nautical miles on the latitude scale. Lay down the compass divider along the planned track, starting from the ship's last known position at 0800 hours. This point is the ship's DR position at 0840 hours. Although the DR position is less accurate than other methods, it serves as the foundation for determining a more precise ship's location, such as the estimated position. Estimated position, EP, is the position determined from the DR position, but adjusted for known external factors such as wind and current. In this scenario, we will apply the effect of a tidal stream or tidal current, known as the set and drift. Set is the direction in degrees toward which the tidal stream or current is moving, while drift or rate refers to the speed of the tidal stream or current, typically measured in knots. On board there are several methods to determine the set and drift. Through tidal stream atlas, tidal diamond, and tidal tables. Tidal Stream Atlas provides visual representations of the tidal streams in a particular area over time, showing both the direction, and speed, 
at different tidal stages. Tidal diamonds can be found on nautical charts, these give the set and drift for specific locations at different times relative to high water. They provide precise information based on the tidal cycle for the exact area around the diamond. Tidal tables offer comprehensive tidal information, including predictions for the height of high and low water, detailed in Part 1. Additionally, they provide tidal stream predictions, which are available in Part 1A of the tables. I've created a separate video that shows how to determine the set and drift. Be sure to check the link in the description for all the details. By applying the set and drift to our DR position, we can determine our estimated position. In this scenario, let's assume we've already determined the set, which is 220 degrees true, with a drift of 4 knots. Let's determine the ship's estimated position at 0900 hours. First, lay down the tidal current direction which is 220 degrees true from the ship's DR position at 0900 hours. Since the ship's steaming time from 0800 hours to 0900 hours is 1 hour, and the speed of the current is 4 miles per hour, we'll measure 4 nautical miles in the latitude scale using a divider. These 4 nautical miles represent the distance the current has pushed the ship during this time. Now, lay the divider from the DR position at 0900 hours along the tidal vector. This point is the ship's estimated position at 0900 hours, which is marked by the standard symbol, a triangle with a dot inside. Mark the tidal vector with three arrows, pointing toward the direction of the tidal current. This is the ship's movement relative to the ground due to the effect of tidal current, so estimated position is more accurate than DR, because it accounts for known external factors, but it is still less precise compared to GPS and radar fixes. Now, if this is our next waypoint, we'll need to adjust our course to steer towards it. However, simply setting a new course doesn't guarantee we'll reach our destination accurately. Continuous monitoring of the ship's position at regular intervals is crucial to ensure timely adjustments, especially to account for the effects of set and drift. I've already made a separate video covering how to determine a course to steer considering these factors, please check the link in the description for the full details. That's all for now, I hope you found this video helpful, thank you for watching, bye.